July 19th marks the 10th anniversary of the crash of Flight 232 in Sioux City. Tonight we begin a week-long look back. The series will include the thoughts of people who helped the passengers, including several who granted their first interviews. We'll also hear the cockpit recordings and the thoughts of those involved on the legacy of Flight 232 for them in the area. We begin tonight with Flight 232 in the air. The flight was bound for Chicago from Denver with 296 souls on board. The trouble began in the skies above Siouxland. Captain Al Haynes declares a May Day, 37,000 miles above Alta, Iowa. The six-foot fan rotor in the number two engine disintegrates, triggering a catastrophic chain reaction. A section of the tail is knocked off. More than 70 pieces of the rotor slice the hydraulic lines. I wanted the flight completely out of left field, and we're cruising along as smooth as you can get at 37,000 feet, and we have an explosion, and it, it rocked the plane. And the aviation world, the three hydraulic cables and a DC-10 are separated on purpose. The flight controls will still work if one or two are lost, but all three, the chances of that happening, one in a billion. The malfunction that they just never dreamed could happen. Usually a major catastrophic uh, malfunction like this, it happens, you lose control and the plane goes down. And we're talking like minutes, two, maybe three minutes and it's, it's impacting the ground. But Flight 232 somehow is still in the air. The crew calls United Maintenance experts who are stunned. They ask three times to confirm that all hydraulics are lost, a problem so severe it's not even in the flight manual. Sioux City got emergency for you. All right. Uh, uh, Kevin Bachman is the air traffic controller at Sioux Gateway. He's in charge of guiding 232 to the ground. United 232 heavy, Sioux City. We have no hydraulic fluid, which means we have no elevator control. Uh, almost none, and very little aileron control. I have serious doubts about making the airport. Have you got uh, someplace near there uh, that we might be able to ditch? And as we get control of this airplane, we're going to put it down wherever it happens to be. In addition to trying to gain control of the plane, the crew is also preparing the passengers, teaching them how to brace for impact and telling them to stay in their seats at all times. One, though, gets up to calm a boy who's asking his mother if he's going to die. Jerry Schemmel told the boy he was a pilot and that he would be okay. His mother, as I walked away, kind of caught my eye and she said thank you. She kind of grabbed my, my arm and, and touched me on the arm and said thank you. And I, I have a feeling she knew what I was up to. I have a feeling she, she knew I was uh, kind of fibbing a little bit about the story about being a pilot, but I think she knew what I was trying to do and she appreciated that. On the ground, rescue and fire crews are alerted. This aircraft carried more passengers than anything we had responded to in the past or anything that we had simulated and, and done exercises for. There isn't any airport uh, in the world that can handle a uh, large-scale disaster without help. An all-call goes out to any area rescue crews that can lend a hand, and almost 300 members of the 185th Fighter Wing stand by. The airport now, 232 as we're turning around in circles. City, Omaha. United 232 Heavy, uh, say again. Here's the airport to us now as we come spinning down here. United 232 uh, Heavy, Sioux City Airport's about 12 o'clock and 36 miles. Okay, we're trying to go straight. We're not having much luck. The plane will only turn right and it wants to roll over. A DC-10 flight instructor who happens to be on board joins the crew in the cabin. He takes over the throttles, gently adding power to the remaining engines to keep the plane from rolling. You can steer a little bit by power because if you've got, well, let's take anybody who has a boat. If anyone has a boat that's got a twin screw boat, if you put more power on the right side than the left side, the output from that engine on the right side is going to push the boat to the left, right? And same thing with us. If we add more power on the right side than the left side, it's going to actually create lift and lift the wing and turn the airplane. Being able to steer even slightly gives the crew hope. Okay, well, head for Houston. We got a little bit of control back there. But the crew worries about stopping the plane if they land. Braking is going to really be a problem. Uh, I would suggest the equipment be toward the far end of the runway. And uh, I think under the circumstances, regardless of the condition of the airplane, when we stop, we're going to evacuate. The crew is also concerned about people on the ground if they have to ditch the plane. You know, 232 Heavy, you're going to have to widen out just slightly to your left, sir, uh, to make the turn to final, and also that'll take you away from the city. Sure. Whatever you do, keep us away from the city. Seven minutes later. 
Houston United 232 Heavy, uh, if you can't make the airport, sir, there is an interstate that runs uh, north to south to the east side of the airport. Uh, it's a four-lane interstate. We're just passing okay. it right now. We're going to crack the airport. United 232 Heavy, roger. And advise when you get the airport in sight. Got a runway in sight. We'll be with you very shortly. Thanks a lot for your help. United 232 Heavy, the wind's currently 360 at 11, 360 at 11. You're cleared to land on any runway. <laughs> you want to be particular and make it a runway, huh? The air traffic controller is not laughing. He realizes the crew has the plane lined up to land on a closed runway. That's where emergency personnel and equipment are waiting. United 232 Heavy, uh, Roger, sir. Yeah, that's a closed runway. That'll work, sir. We're getting the equipment off the runway, and they'll line up for that one. How long is it? 6,600 feet. 6,600, and the equipment's coming off. At the end of the runway, it's just a wide open field, so, sir, so the length won't be a problem. As it approaches, the plane is flying two times too fast, but it looks like it's going to make it. But 10 seconds before touchdown, the plane dips to the right one last time. Plane of 19. Coming down real fast down the south end. Okay, all right, one motor. One hundred twelve people on board died, but even more, one hundred eighty four survived. Tomorrow at ten in part two, we'll have more on that extraordinary rescue effort. And a reminder, our one hour special on flight two thirty two airs next Sunday night at seven. This week we'll honor some of the hundreds of people who responded to the call whose extraordinary efforts saved lives.